This video is for educational purposes only and only competent persons should attempt the installations shown in this video. Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel and welcome to another edition of House Renovation Time. This is a single gang box in a bathroom of a 1957 house that I'm renovating. I have removed a ground fault circuit interrupter receptacle from this box. And the circuit breaker is off, but we're going to double check it, checking all the wires and making sure that none of them are hot. I'm also going to use my Fluke 117 electrician's meter and test out both of the cables. And they both read 0.0, .0 volts, so the circuit breaker is indeed off. The problem with this old GFCI receptacle is it's old. It's got paint all over it. It's got, well, it's got some cockroach poop on it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, that's the way it is. It's got, it does, it has cockroach poop on it. And it did not work. When I pressed test, it wouldn't test. And when I pressed reset, that wouldn't help either. It was working as a receptacle, but it wasn't protecting anything downstream. Since this GFCI was not working properly, I'm not going to trust that the wiring was correct. I'm going to test it out for myself. You can see by observation that this is one cable and this is one cable. And then this is a ground wire. And I'll have to discuss how the ground wire was connected to the box. I'll do that in just a minute. So you see these old wires are not in the best of shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover each of the ends of these wires with a woggle lever nut for safety. And then I'm going to turn on the circuit breaker and I'm going to find out which wire is hot all the time. And that will tell me which one is the line cable. That's the cable that's coming from the panel. And the other one will be the load cable, and that's the one that will take the current to the next downstream receptacle. And when we do this properly, we'll be protecting the downstream receptacle. So I have now put woggle lever nuts on each of the four wires, and I've turned on the circuit breaker. I put the woggle lever nuts on to protect myself from any bare wires. So it's my Fluke 1AC voltage detector. And I'm going to go around and look for a hot wire. Okay, there it is, right there. Notice there's only one hot wire. Okay, there's enough white on, on these two cables right here that I know they're neutrals. These are old wires, and sometimes so much of the color comes off of them that you can't really tell anymore. But these I can tell. These are neutrals, and this is the black hot wire. That means that this is the line cable coming from the panel, bringing the current into the box. And this is your load cable, which takes the current to the next receptacle downstream. So my next step is I'm going to turn the circuit breaker off again and I'm going to wrap this one. I'm going to, I'm going to trim up the little loose parts on here and I'm going to rewrap this wire with white electrician's tape. I'm going to trim up this one and rewrap it with white electrician's tape. And then I'll wrap this wire with black electrician's tape and I'll wrap this one with red electrician's tape. Okay, I have wrapped the wires with electrician's tape and while I have the and while I have the breaker off, I want to address this ground wire. You see, it's just a, a self-tapper screw back there, and that's not allowed, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. The new GFCI receptacle has what we call a self-grounding clip on it. So I'm going to utilize that. That way I won't have to use a green grounding wire at all. I have to make sure that the paper washer is off. 
So once I turn the breaker back on, I'll be testing this metal box to see if it is indeed grounded. I've turned the circuit breaker back on and we're protecting ourselves by having these wire connectors on the ends of the wires. And this is our hot line wire right here. I have one probe connected to this Wago lever nut right here on the hot line wire. And I put another one right back here on the metal box and it says 116 and it says 116 volts AC. That tells us that this box has a return path to the panel, which means that it is grounded. It's a 1957 method of grounding, which means that the grounding wires come back to the back of the box back here. They're in the wall. That's the way they did it back then, but it is a ground. We don't know where these load wires are going. I turned off the circuit and I reduced it to four possibilities. Then I used my ideal SureTest circuit analyzer and it gave me a good guess as to which receptacle this load cable goes to. And believe it or not, it's in the kitchen. <laughs> so now I'm going to show you how to do a test to find out for sure where this load cable goes. That's going to tell you what downstream receptacle this new GFCI that we put in here is going to control. Before we get started, let's do a, a triple check. <laughs> okay, make sure there's no electricity. It's super, super, super important. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this Wago lever nut right here. I'm going to open up this Wago lever nut over here. And just temporarily, I'm going to connect these together. Just put it right in there and connect it together. So I have both wires of this cable connected together just temporarily. You must, must, must never do this with the circuit breaker on. This circuit breaker is off and as soon as we've done the test, you must disconnect it. But for now, we have these two wires connected and now we're gonna go out to the kitchen and find out for sure where this load wire goes. I have used my ideal sure test circuit analyzer and it told me that the highest likelihood was that this receptacle right here was downstream of the ground fault circuit interrupter that we've been working on because it had the lowest voltage drop of the other receptacles on the circuit. So that's why I thought it was this one. So here is my Fluke 117 electrician's meter. And I've turned it to continuity. I'm going to turn the back light on. Okay, so I'm going to put this right on here. Oh, look at that. We have continuity. Okay, so that continuity means that this cable is the same cable that we have connected together in the bathroom. This neutral wire is that neutral wire, and this hot wire is that hot wire. So now with the circuit breaker off, I'm going to take this apart and I want to really emphasize that that was only a very temporary test to find out where this cable goes. So now while of course still having the circuit breaker off, we're going to install the new GFCI. The upper part of this GFCI is the line. The, the line area is right here. So now, of course, we still have the circuit breaker off and we're going to put these line wires that, are, that comprise the line cable in the upper portion here. It says line right here. And so I'm going to put this neutral on the silver terminal of the upper line area of the GFCI. And these wires are pretty short but um, I think I'll be able to manage. And we'll tighten up the neutral. And take and give it a tug to make sure it's good and tight. Okay, then we take this red wire and we hook it to the bronze colored terminal of the line area. We're gonna put this neutral load wire to the load area with the silver terminal. And last but not least, we're gonna put the hot wire from the load cable to 
the load area and the brass terminal. Now I'm going to put some black electrician's tape around the terminals for safety. This is an especially good idea when you have metal boxes. Okay, so now it's time to put the cover on. We'll press reset. So with my outlet tester plugged in, it's showing correct wiring, including it's grounded. So the self-grounding clip of the ground fault circuit interrupter did work. Now you press test, it goes out, you press reset, and it goes back on. So this is working properly. Now I'm at the kitchen receptacle, controlled by that GFCI we just finished. And I'm using the same procedure here. Okay, this is your hot wire, and this is your neutral wire. So I'll wrap this one with black electrician's tape, and I'll wrap this one with white electrician's tape. Now I'll attach the white neutral wire to one of the silver terminals, and I'll attach the black hot wire to one of the bronze colored terminals, and, and because this is a quality receptacle, it has a self-grounding clip, and that will serve to ground this receptacle to the 1957 grounding system of the house. Now I'll put black electrician's tape around the terminals for safety and I'll install the receptacle into the metal box. Now it's time to turn on the circuit breaker and make our tests. Okay, I've turned on the circuit breaker and plugged in my outlet tester. It says correctly wired. The self-grounding clip has worked properly. Now I'm gonna to go to the bathroom and hit test on that GFCI, and let's see if it turns off this receptacle. So hitting test on that GFCI did turn this receptacle off. So I'm going to put a GFCI protected outlet sticker right there. This sticker is especially important when the controlled outlet is in another room. I'll put links in my video description for the Fluke 1 AC voltage sensor, the Fluke 117 electrician's meter, the ideal circuit analyzer for Wago lever nuts, the ideal circuit breaker finder kit for white electrical tape, and last but not least, for the 15 amp Leviton devices seen in the video. Thanks, I hope this video was helpful.